Pushing my boundaries has changed my life. And now I'm on a mission to help five others change theirs. I'm Ben Fogel, and this is Extreme Dreams. Each week, I'll lead a team of would-be explorers on the trip of their lives. The potential for death is high. As they pit themselves against some of the world's most extreme environments. I'm not taking a risk. Not for anyone. They'll be pushed to their physical limits. And emotions will run high. I so want to climb this mountain. These people all have very personal reasons for being here. And for those who rise to the challenge, life will never be the same again. I can see why I always put gods on top of mountains. This week, we take on our biggest challenge yet. We've come to Tanzania in East Africa to climb one of the highest mountains in the world, Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro is an awesome peak, which rises nearly four miles into space. It's the tallest mountain that could be attempted without training. Reaching the peak means climbing halfway out of the Earth's atmosphere towards the ozone layer. With only 50% of the oxygen we need to breathe normally, this peak comes at a price. One person a month dies attempting to climb. It'll take us five gruelling days to get to the top, and we'll be climbing through every possible terrain to get there. We'll travel through hot, tropical rainforest, up to the Arctic conditions of minus 25 on the summit. On top of that, we'll have to deal with the unpredictable factors of altitude sickness. As we attempt to reach the peak, of the tallest freestanding volcano on the planet. Stepping into the unknown this week are five wannabe explorers from all over the UK. 19-year-old student Jenny Cowan loves pushing herself. I like challenges. I mean, they're normally horrid at the time, and then you look back on it, and they're like the best moments of your life. Alpha male builder Jason Maloney is escaping the pressure of running his own business. I think I'm very fortunate to be able to go on this trip. It's just whether I can do it or not. <laughs> okay, Junior doctor Deepika Yerikalva wants to widen her horizons. I'm not an adrenaline person at all. I hate roller coasters. I don't like heights, and I think if I can do it, I'll prove a lot to myself. Trainee teacher Ben Thwaites wants to see what life's like beyond the comfort zone. I'm quite relaxed. I'm probably too um, relaxed. <laughs> My favourite thing in the world is the duvet. And wife, mother and grandmother Paula Smith just wants to break free. It would be nice to get away, because what I am here is not who I am. I've forgotten who Paula is. Five very different people with one thing in common. They all want to prove themselves on Extreme Dreams. It's the middle of the night when we finally touch down in Tanzania after a 12-hour, 5,000-mile flight from London. But not even half an hour off the plane, we've already got a casualty. Paula, the oldest member of our team, has dislocated a finger. I was reaching for my bag and the fella in the front seat pulled the overhead thing down, tap it down, top your finger with him. And I've done it before. Paula puts a brave face on it, but let's hope she keeps smiling because we've got a long way to go. It's late at night, everyone's exhausted. We're going to get some sleep. Early start tomorrow. Coming up on day one of our bid for the summit. Paula's problems multiply when we have to cross a fast-flowing river. I can't believe this. The day was trying to pitch my sandals, so we're taping to my feet. And then it's got to wash off on wash, but I can't, so... And the team get a wake-up call when we climb a live volcano. It's silly o'clock. It really is silly o'clock. In the middle of the night. I was about to say, look how far we've come, but... Uh, it's a long way. I can't actually see anything. <laughs> it's the next morning, and after just a few hours sleep, it's time to head off. Right, this is ours, guys. This one here. Joining us on the expedition oh, is guide and doctor Jim Duff. Given the terrain we'll be crossing and the heights we'll be climbing, it's vital to have a doctor on the team. The danger of climbing Killy cannot be underestimated. There's a statistic that only 70% of people make it to the top of, of Killy. And I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty stubborn, determined person, and I really, really want to get everyone there. 
As no one on my team has got any mountain climbing experience, I'm going to try and increase the odds of getting everyone to the top by attempting a practice climb. Today we're travelling five hours north to Oldenio Lengai, a 2,000 metre high live active volcano. These guys don't know it yet, but we're going to try and get to the top of it. The question is, how will my team fare? How are you feeling about today? Full of anticipation, wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> well, darling, I've never thought about it. At first glance, Paula might not seem the most obvious person to volunteer for a mountain climb. That'll do. Oh, you get rotten teeth, lad. I'm terrified of heights. It is a real phobia. I'm terrified. I will cry. I'm going to kill you without a doubt. There'll be times when I will cry, the stress of it. She spent the last 20 years looking after her husband and three boys. Now she's desperate for the chance night? to do something for herself. Oh, I know what you'd add. Someone's mum, someone's wife, someone's granny, but who's Perla? Forgotten who she is. So, despite her fears, she's been training hard and is determined to give it her all. I got to crossroads in my life. I just thought this trip would be like the thing. Get away, forget everybody, and come back up to buy then a meditation, what I'm going to do with my life. <laughs> It's a long, dusty five-hour ride to Oldenio Lengai. And to get there, we've got to cross the Ngorogoro crater, which means traversing down nearly a mile of pothole dirt tracks. It was so steep. It wasn't even a road. There was potholes. We were getting bounced around. Let's hold on, because it's quite bumpy. I thought we were go around the edge. We were that corner. Paula looked nervous before we'd even got on the bus, and it's obvious she isn't coping very well with the terrain. It was a narrow track. We were literally the right hand side was a sheer drop. Oh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet. Yeah, look this way. Look at it. Look at it. Don't look around the We try our best to distract her, but for Paula, who's struggled since the moment she got off the plane, this is another trial. It literally turned a bend and I actually thought we were going to fall into the crater. It, it was horrendous. I really I come up really ill, dizzy. I felt terrible. How are you feeling? Crazy, yeah. Uh, Oh, oh, don't, don't, don't worry. God, I'm sorry. Don't, don't, don't worry. Get a grip, girl. Get a grip. But unfortunately, Paula's woes continue. Dr Jim is worried about her arm and has strapped it up en route. Yeah. It's still the same, my pull tendon. This is just on for a bit of support. Nothing else. And it can come off. If it gets in the way, I'll take it off. Climbing Kilimanjaro is going to take more than just physical fitness. To get to the top, we're also going to need extraordinary determination and willpower. It's time to find out if my team have got what it takes. We're going to climb this one. Active volcano, 2,000 metres of ascent. Starting in the dark tomorrow morning. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah. And imagine Killy's two and a half times higher. Well, that's the, that's the thing. This, yeah. is a, this is a small bite. Everyone's feeling a little apprehensive. I think this is sort of the first little mini Killy they're going to uh, test us out on and see what we do. So if we don't make it up this, it's just going to be embarrassing. Reaching the top of Killy will be a real achievement for Ben, who until two years ago was happily drifting through life. I was sort of on a corporate treadmill, so it's easy just to carry on and work and have your head down. And I could have done that for the next 30 years without ever making a change. But all that changed on the 7th of July 2005, when Ben was caught up in the bombing at London's Edgware Road tube station. I was always sure that I'd be able to look after myself and get myself through anything and care for those people around me and it would all be OK in the end. And 7th July just made it very clear that those things can change in a second. For Ben, Killy's an important hurdle to cross and one which he's hoping will help put the past behind him. And part of this whole experience for me so far has been sort of a, a escapism, frankly, um, from everyday, everyday life and the opportunity to go and do something like this that's so far removed from the real world. It's just, it'll be brilliant. First off, we've got to get to the base of the volcano where we'll camp before attempting the climb early in the morning. We've got a three-hour uphill hike ahead of us. We're following the river, but the banks aren't very stable, so we have to keep crossing from side to side. Surprisingly um, rocky underfoot, it's slippery, 
And, you know, if you did go into that, we'd have broken bones. And, you know, we haven't even started our ascent of Kilimanjaro yet. The slippery rocks and fast current are making this a difficult walk. Only one member of the team seems really at home, former girl guide Jenny. This group's probably better than the group of guides because there's, uh, everyone's a bit stronger and we got a few men in the group and stuff. So. Oh, that was very nice of you. Yeah. 19-year-old Jenny is the youngest member of our team. She's studying at the University of London, but she's not your average student. At school, I was head girl. I'm a guide and scout leader. I've got my Millennium Volunteers on my Duke of Edinburgh. And when Jenny's not adding to her list of achievements, she's helping others. In London, I help put freight liners to the farm on a Saturday morning. I grow the vegetables and it's like a community farm. Now Jenny's after a new challenge. If I got there and like didn't get to the top, I'd feel like I hadn't achieved anything. And then I'll be very frustrated and I'll have to get back and do it again sometime. <laughs> Two hours later, and the group's slow progress is starting to cause tension. It's only day one, and company director Jason is already finding teamwork frustrating. The, the, the big thing for me, being in the group, is because I've always worked for myself, pretty much. I've never had that working as a unit or working in an office environment or whichever, being told what to do. I've always been my own boss, I make my own decisions. And maybe I'm just a little bit too old in the tooth and too many years working for myself to be told what to do at this stage of my life. Master builder Jason Maloney is a self-made man who works hard and plays hard. Running his own building company, Jason's used to calling the shots and saying what he thinks. I just can't stand whingers. There's just, there's no reason for it. I, well, OK, we've all got our little things, but hey, listen, there's a lot, 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 lot more that can happen to you in life. One touch. This trip is giving Jason the chance to fulfil a dream. Seven years ago, his father was diagnosed with cancer on the eve of a climbing trip they'd been planning for years. My father and I, we never, ever had a chance uh, to go off and do a trek ourselves, which we always said we'd do. We'd go up into the mountains, we'd do an outback in Chamonix, which is something we wanted to do. We never got round to it. Unfortunately, uh, he, he got liver cancer and uh, it was irreversible and it was a matter of months. And we just, that time was just gone, it was so precious. And I never fulfilled that dream. The trip had to be canceled, and Jason's father died shortly afterwards. It's my one regret that we never finally got to do anything like that, which we always said we would. Just left it that little bit too late. In an extra twist of fate, tomorrow would have been Jason's dad's birthday. You know, I'm here, Dad, and uh, you know, tomorrow's a big day and we're going to do this, this climb for you. But even after a rest, the team's progress is incredibly slow. We've still got a long hike up to our campsite and to make matters worse, the light's beginning to fade. The river crossings are really testing us and we're all struggling to stay on our feet in the fast currents. But for Paula, this is becoming more than just a physical challenge. From day one, I had more to prove than anyone else at, at, on, on the team. One, because I, I was the eldest. Two, I was the biggest. Oh, we lost you for a minute there, Paula. Oh, no, <laughs> I kept thinking, they're not going to look at me and think she's capable of doing it. They're going to look and see old fat woman. And so I had, I had that to prove to myself, you know, and to prove to everybody else, well, you know, I might not look the part, but I can, I can do the part. Paula does her best to keep her morale up, but it's obvious that she's putting a brave face on it. She hurt her arm and she had to have it strapped to her in the sling, if I remember. And then she had the wrong kind of shoes on. They didn't want us to go on, and she was really struggling with it. This is the first day, uh, literally, you know, and look at me, what am I going to end up like? And I just kept thinking, everyone's going to be looking at me and thinking, oh, God. With the light fading, it's important that we pick up the pace. Dr Jim decides that the only way Paula's going to make it to camp is literally to tape her shoes to her feet. Everything was focused on me. If someone's going to be ill, it me. Well, I knew that anyway. I thought if someone's going to have an accident, it'd be me. With her new bespoke walking shoes and Dr Jim at her side, Paula keeps going. 
still to come on Extreme Dreams. Paula's nightmare goes from bad to worse. I really felt ill. Junior Dr Deepika's confidence hemorrhages as she loses her grip on the mountain. I don't, I don't want to cry. It's so ridiculous. And the first splits in the group start to emerge. She's obviously going to feel bad because she doesn't want to hold up the rest of the group. It might have been nice to have got to the top of this, this level. The team finally struggle into camp in the complete darkness. And it's not a moment too soon. Paul has been steadily getting worse the further we've walked and has been violently ill. And my stomach starts, I get stomach pains, and I thought I'm going to vomit. Basically, what we're going tomorrow, I'm going to stay here, just rest up, because at the end of the day, Achilles more important, get myself right as rain again. Yeah. Easy to remember. Paula's ailments are starting to affect the rest of the group. Paula had a splint on her arm, and then we had the river crossing with the wrong shoes, and then she got ill and she, she vomited. I think it is a bit of a dent in your confidence. I personally would have felt a little bit out of um, touch with everybody else, you know. The group's all gone off and they've done that and I'm sitting back in camp. I would have felt, guys, you know, I'm not 100% part of it. Oh, oh dear, what do we do here then? We've only got four hours to get some rest and for some of us, this is the first night in a tent. Um, I've never camped like anything like this before, so it's a completely new experience. This is, you better enjoy this while we've got it, because it's not going to be as good as this. Junior doctor Deepika is feeling nervous about tonight's practice climb. Everyone else was like, they were really, like, really excited about it. And I was like, not excited. I'm more like, oh gosh, you know, that's really scary. With eight short months between finishing her training and starting work as a junior doctor, Deepika's desperate to do something that's purely for herself. All the time I've been studying, working, I've, never, I've not really had that much time to myself to just do nothing. Once I start work, you never get the time to just be someone separate from your job. Deepika also hopes the time away will help her make an important decision she's facing, whether to have the arranged marriage her family want for her. I was fine with everything until, I think, just after my sister got married and then I went really anti the whole thing. I was like, I don't want, I don't want you to marry me to anyone, don't want anything to do with any of it. I just, I don't agree with it. Deepika is at a crossroads. With the rest of her life potentially mapped out for her, she's got some big issues to think about when she's on the trip. I'd like to feel um, confident about myself that I can do something this physically tough and overcome some of my fears. Well, it's three o'clock in the morning. We've had just a few hours sleep. I'm utterly exhausted. <laughs> Only five of us today, because Paul is still ill. Ben has taken the lead, and ahead of us is the 2,000 metre ascent of a live volcano in the darkness. It's vital that we work as a team today, and it will give Jim and I the opportunity to see who has what it takes to get to the top of Kilimanjaro. Just time for a quick, but very necessary cup of coffee before we set off for the volcano. Had three hours sleep. I think it'd be all right. We'll pull through. Just take it a step at a time, really, because I think when you stand there, look at it after driving around it for ages, and you're like, "Yeah, we're going up that." I was like, "Okay, that's great, fantastic." Also, guys, this is a warm up for Kelly, and uh, it's really going to be a good test, isn't it, for us to see how we're going to do in the, on the main climb. <laughs> In just six days' time, we'll be climbing through the night to try and reach the summit of Kilimanjaro. But by then, we'll be exhausted after days up the mountain, and there'll only be half the amount of oxygen in the air. Oh, and there's another big difference. Anyone that can't keep up will be left behind. Quite bizarre, climbing, walking up in the dark, and you couldn't really see where you was going. You are stumbling on rocks. I mean, I was out of breath just doing that one. I'm climbing the Kilimanjaro of half the amount of oxygen. Though it's pitch black, it's vital that we stick to the path. There are steep drops on both sides, and a fall could be disastrous. Just let them catch up a bit. We've got a bit strung up, eh? But then alarm bells start ringing. Deepika has suddenly dropped right back behind the rest of us and is struggling to keep up. So I go slowly now. I'll be all right, but then there's the conflicting, you know, holding everyone back. 
she's right behind me, I can hear her, her breath, and there was lots of, is it nearly the 30 minute stop yet? Um, in, a, in a sort of, I really need to stop. We've barely even started our climb, and Deepika's seriously out of breath. I can't, I mean, I don't really have another option. So, this is gonna be the way it is, I guess. We're just finding a pace that works for us all, aren't we? Yeah. Deeps was saying, you know, is this the sort of gradient we can expect on Kilimanjaro? And I didn't want to kind of put the fear of God into her, but <laughs> this is this is like walking in a car park. <laughs> it's gonna get a lot tougher. She struggles on for another hour, but then worryingly, Deepika grinds to a complete standstill. This time it's blisters. Is it both hills? You just feel some hot spots coming on. On the heels, yeah. We've had months to wear in our boots because blisters are a serious problem on a trek like this. Even something as small as that can stop you getting to the summit. Though at this rate, we won't be getting there anyway. We'll get, we'll get some way up without even realising. I was about to say, look how far we've come, but... Uh, it's a long way. I can't actually see anything. <laughs> The rising sun should mean we can pick up the pace and bolt for the summit before it gets too hot. But by now, Deepika's way behind the rest of the group. This is taxing terrain, this is not easy, this. Feel it grip just behind the ball of your foot. Somebody shouted up, I think it was Dr Jim, that Deepika's having trouble, so we realised we needed to stop and wait. Even though it's now light, Deepika's walking slower and slower. The hold-ups are starting to affect the rest of the group. Definitely, you can see two groups forming. Um, and I think it's us, up to us to slow down a bit and check that they're OK. If we have to slow down, it will make it harder for me. But then the reason we're going slow is because it's hard for someone else. So She's obviously going to feel bad because she doesn't want to hold up the rest of the group. And probably it's not good for us guys to be, you know, pounding on ahead. And uh, poor Deep's back there with the doctor. In a devastating loss of confidence, Deepika seems unable to put one foot in front of the other. You're too far. Get your ball of your foot down a bit, down a bit, until you feel it. You've gone too far. It got lighter, and I was starting to struggle with where to put my feet, and then it all kind of snowballed from there. Get the ball of your foot on there. Mm -hmm. I realised everyone was ahead, and Jim was helping just me. I didn't know where to put my feet, I didn't trust putting my feet anywhere, and then you just, you get put into a role of not being able to do it, and then you just sort of accept it, kind of. No, just stand on to that, trust it. Trust me. <laughs> Kilimanjaro is three times the size of this volcano. However will Deepika manage? Not too, not too, not too far. You know, <laughs> really concentrating on everything, and. You're aware you're so far behind everyone else. So, yeah, that's it really. I don't, I don't want to cry. It's so ridiculous. It's so embarrassing as well. Like you feel a huge amount of pressure because, yeah, everyone, everyone else was fine. So you're like, for goodness sake, it's so pathetic. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it really, I guess. Everyone else is itching to get to the summit, but we're not sure what's going on further down. It may be time to go back down because everyone's stopped in it. Just as she looks like she's had enough, Deepika digs deep, picks herself up, and gives it one more shot. Oh no, are they coming back up now? Felt like I was laying them down and they could have got to the top, and then that would have been a really good achievement for everyone. Oh, so yeah, it was really annoying that they all had to wait for me. Now trust it, trust it. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, a bit of a lurch. It's a long step, but. With Dr. Jim's coaching, Deepika's back on her feet. But for the rest of us, it's agony to watch. Nobody said it, really. But I think we all thought the same thing, you know. How's she going to be at climbing Kilimanjaro? I've, made you, I've warmed you a seat. Oh, thanks. Got <laughs> and she made it up the, the volcano to us. Uh, and certainly had uh, me choking, and, um, and Jason as well was you know, pretty close to tears, I think, just because Deeps was so emotional about it. Hand down. Well done. I'm fine. I'm Are okay. you okay? I'm better. Yeah, I'll take those. Oh. We're nearly at the top of the, the first angle, and the top of the hill is, you know, we could make it if we had a bit more time, really, but it's up to you guys. Are we going any farther? 
But the team are split on whether to continue without Deepika or call it a day. Probably start on the way back down, I think, to, to make sure. What do, you, what do you guys think? It might have been nice to have got to the top of this, this level, yeah. just to say, just to, like, achieve some, you know... Final a, objective. A goal. And then from the bottom, we can say, no. that's where we got. I don't want to split up the group, to be honest. I think we should do whatever we do as a team and make sure that we work as a team. Um, and I know that it'd be great to get higher up and it'd be fun to do that, but we've got Kelly to climb. And I'd rather do that together. So if it's OK with everyone else, I think we should all go down as a team. Mm -hmm. Everyone had said, you know, oh, this isn't to get to the top kind of thing, which I thought was a little bit defeatist in a way, because I thought if we got to the top, that would be a really good boost. But if we'd split on the volcano and gone into two groups and some of us had gone ahead to see how much further we'd gone up, then that temptation would always have been there for the other days that we were climbing. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna, we've, you know, got it, we've got to move whatever, yeah, so... Yeah, we've got to move. Yeah. So OK. Run, we all go down. And I think by staying to, together, it made us into more of a team and we carried on being a team for the rest, of the rest of the way. The group decide not to go on without Deepika. It's a democratic decision, but the disappointment amongst the fitter members of the team is hard to hide. It didn't really go through my mind that um, somebody would stop us going to the top because um, as much as we were a group, it was all an individual task. This was a trial climb, but it's exposed stark differences in the group's fitness and confidence levels. Whew, well, 8.30 in the morning, we've made it halfway up the 2,000 metre volcano, and now we've made the decision to return to base camp. It really has been a reality check today. Some of the guys wanted to continue on, but Deeps has been really struggling, and we decided to return to base camp as a whole team, and that has to be a good thing for when we try to climb Kilimanjaro tomorrow. But I can't help wondering whether the team have got the grit and determination they're going to need to make it to the top of the peak next time.